like I just I haven't moved I haven't progressed you know I just want to know who killed my sister I just want to see for myself from my own two eyes without the police without without the, all that crap you know what I'm saying like I want to be face to face and just and just and just know how it was forever. April 20th 1996 the first deceased remains were discovered on Fire Island. A pair of severed legs wrapped in plastic was the first indication that there was something sinister and truly evil happening on Long Island. This wasn't just a one-time thing. Four years after the remains of Fire Island's Jane Doe were found, more partial remains were found. In November 2000, the Manorville Jane Doe was found in Long Island. And again, three years later in July 2003, even more female remains were found in the same location in Manorville. At this point, it was unclear to investigators whether the string of murders was related or not. All anyone knew at the time was that three innocent lives had been taken, and there was a monster lurking in the shadow shadows of Long Island. State Police, Trooper Fry. State Police. Yeah, there's somebody asking me. I'm sorry? There's somebody asking me. Where are you? There's somebody asking me. Okay, where are you? There's somebody asking me. Where are you, ma'am? I don't know. You're driving right now? No, I'm inside the house. I'm sorry? I'm inside the house. What house? I don't know. Can you trace where I am? I'm sorry? Can you trace where I am? In the early hours of May 1st, 2010, Shannon Gilbert traveled to Oak Beach to meet with a client, Joseph Brewer. Hours later, 911 received a phone call from Shannon, but she was unable to disclose her location. Shannon never returned home that night. During the 911 call, Brewer could be heard in the background pushing Shannon to talk to a stranger. She refused and stayed on the phone with the operator for 23 minutes. In an attempt to escape the situation, Shannon ran from the home and down the road. 15 minutes into the call, the sounds of a scuffle and screaming could be heard. Fearing for her life, Shannon frantically runs door to door, hoping and praying that someone will help her. Two additional 911 calls were made that night to report a terrified young woman. Shannon Gilbert didn't come home that night. Different angles captured by surveillance cameras document one of the last times Megan Waterman was seen. The 22-year-old who advertised herself as an escort on Craigslist. Went missing in early June of 2010, soon after leaving the Holiday Inn Express in Hop Hog. Based on what we know right now, we believe she did leave the hotel that night to meet her killer. Just a month after the disappearance of Shannon Gilbert, Megan Waterman was seen alive for the last time. Two months later, another young woman goes missing. Amber Lynn Costello was last seen leaving her home to meet with a client. Unlike the previous woman, Amber was never reported missing. A team of officers, canines, and members of the Gilbert family were still on the hunt for Shannon when they came across the first of four bodies that would come to be known as the Gilgo Four. Nearing the end of a painful year, canine teams discovered the skeletonized remains of Melissa Bartholomew. She was wrapped in a burlap sack and tossed into a horde of thick bushes on Gilgo Beach. The deserted beach was covered in a thick layer of snow that day. Something perhaps symbolic could have been said about this moment. Fearing the worst, investigators began to believe that the disappearances were not a coincidence. And just four days after finding the remains of Melissa, canine teams searched the surrounding brush only to find the skeletal remains of Amber Costello, Megan Waterman, and Maureen Brainard Barnes as well. It was undeniable that Long Island was dealing with a serial killer, but there was still one problem. Why were some of the bodies dismembered while others were not? It's a theory that he became comfortable with killing. The so GB4, this is collection behavior. This guy is a collector. The other cases, this is a sadist, an extreme sadist. Two different cases, two different personalities. You're not dancing with one serial killer, you're dancing with two. Experts and investigators strain to believe that Long Island would be cursed to have two active serial killers, but the number of bodies piling up was even harder to dismiss. Authorities continued to search for Shannon Gilbert. Amid that pursuit, officers found even more practical skeletal remains, six miles east of where the Gilgo Beach Four were found. These remains were linked back to the ones found in Manorville in July 2003. These remains belonged to Jessica Taylor, a 20-year-old sex worker. 
On April 4, 2011, officers discovered perhaps the most heartbreaking scene of their investigation. In June of 1997, a woman's torso was found by a hiker, disposed of in a green rubber container in Hempstead Lake State Park. It wasn't until the 2011 discovery did officers piece together Jane Doe No. 3's connection. Jane Doe, at the time, had been dubbed Peaches. In April 2011, Peach's extremities were discovered in the brush off Ocean Parkway in Jones Beach. DNA and gold jewelry tied Peaches to a toddler skeleton found 10 miles east on Ocean Parkway. Ten sets of remains east and west of Gilgo Beach were linked to the elusive Long Island serial killer known as Lisk. Authorities continued their search throughout 2011. Countless sets of remains, whether whole or partial, were discovered on Gilgo Beach and Fire Island. The remains of the first Jane Doe would later be connected to remains found in that search. Once more, as we neared the end of the year, investigators found a cell phone, lip gloss, shoes, and a pocketbook belonging to Shannon Gilbert. Days later, as they followed the trail of lost belongings, Suffolk County Police found the skeleton of Shannon Gilbert along the brush on Gilgo Beach. Nineteen months after she vanished, Shannon's death was ultimately ruled as an accidental drowning. The Gilbert family, on the other hand, do not believe this to be true. Wrecked with grief, the Gilbert family spiraled into a darkness of their own. The mother of Shannon Gilbert, who pushed for her daughter's search and was credited with the discovery of the body, was stabbed to death in her apartment nearly five years later. On July 23, 2016, Mary Gilbert was found stabbed to death in her apartment. Sarah Gilbert, Mari's other daughter, was found guilty. For the next four years, the case of the Long Island serial killer fell cold. In the dawn of a new year, police released photos of a belt with the letters H and M imprinted onto the leather. Investigators believed this belt to have belonged to the killer themselves. In May of 2020, during the height of the pandemic, the Manaville Jane Doe was identified as 24-year-old Valerie Mack. She was never officially reported as a missing person, but through the science of genetic genealogy, CSI scientists were able to identify her. And now, with over a decade of time behind us, an arrest was finally made. Suspect Rex Hoyerman was arrested July 13, 2023 in Midtown Manhattan. Investigators have charged him with the deaths of Megan Waterman, Amberlynn Costello, and Melissa Bartholomew. Detectives are working towards naming Hoyerman as the prime suspect in the death of Maureen Brainard Barnes, as well as the dozens of other victims. Just a bombshell arrest shocking New Yorkers on Long Island and Manhattan. An architect facing murder charges in those Gilgo Beach murders. News 4 has the exclusive video showing Rex Hurman last night, right before investigators arrested him in Midtown Manhattan. And today, only News 4's cameras were there as he was escorted out of a Long Island precinct. The 59-year-old has pleaded not guilty to three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of second-degree murder. He's accused of killing three of the so-called Gilgo Four, women's remains found along Ocean Parkway in Gilgo Beach back in 2010. He is the prime suspect in a fourth killing, but not charged for now. The Long Island serial killer case is still ongoing as investigators connect the final dots. Neighbors, friends, and family of Hoyerman are rattled, but the family and friends of the victims are finding their much-needed closure.